Well, let's call a spade a spade. Week nine was drunk. This is a weird week of football, a weird week for fantasy football. We're covering all the studs and duds on today's show. Make sure you like, subscribe, don't miss a minute. The holidays can be hectic, but preparing festive meals just got easier. Now you can cut out grocery shopping and limit meal prep time with Hello Fresh. Get up to 14 free meals plus three free gifts with code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. And Foot Clan, we want to thank Notion. Not all work collaboration tools are created equal. Some help you organize your company's information. Others allow you to manage projects together. Notion does both. It's one tool for your whole team to do it all. It's so beautifully designed and everyone will want to use it for companies of all sizes. Notion provides one central and customizable workspace that can be tailored to fit any team. Bring all your teams together and get more done and move faster. It has powerful integrations and seamless navigation, so you'll have everything you need in one spot. So your startup, you can make your speed your advantage without the silos and context switching that slow companies down. Plus, Notion has a worldwide network of millions of users creating templates and tutorials. Further inspiration, it's getting better all the time. You can learn more and get started for free at Notion.so. You could check it out on your own and invite as many folks as you want and see how it works. Take the first step towards an organized, happy team today, again, at Notion.so. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> you sounded like a weed whacker. <laughs> Good old fashioned 6 a.m. I'm trying to sleep in, and then my neighbor's like, <laughs> Wake up! <laughs> What's going on, everybody? Welcome into the show. I'm back, baby! That's right. It is nice to have you back, have us all in one room so that we can make incredible jokes and play off one another. Um, like, your goatee's gone, so that was one avenue that I was, like, hoping to make a lot of jokes on. Right, and and I took that away from you. I gave you a completely new avenue. They said right. it couldn't get worse than the goatee. Oh, no. That's what they said. They were wrong. Oh, and they then were, the producer zoom oh, in. Oh, yeah. This was... <laughs> If you want to see my fat face, go to youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers um, and count the chins. There are three men and four chins here, so welcome. Four? <laughs> oh, 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 God. Oh, man. Welcome, man. Um, it, I'll tell you what. My face looks like week nine in the NFL. <laughs> That's how bad my face looks Your face looks right is now. drunk? <laughs> Dude, this was the wildest, craziest uh, week. I feel like... Don't bet on sports. I mean, <laughs> just don't do it. I feel like if an analyst got everything right this weekend, they're a bad analyst. <laughs> like, oh, I, but, right. You know what I mean? It was just so unpredictable. It was, it was absolute anarchy. Nothing made uh, sense. Complete stranger things upside down in the NFL this week. Are you saying that it was strange that the now playoff bound Atlanta Falcons defeated the New Orleans Saints? Is that a strange thing? I would say that was almost as strange as the Jacksonville Jaguars beating the Buffalo Bills. I feel like we should just briefly sit there. I know we're going through studs and duds on the show, but I really want to talk about this cover two shell thing because sure. the Chiefs this year, including this game against the Packers, their offense has been slowed down. Patrick Mahomes hasn't been what he's been. Um, what I see is Madden rating dropped a spot. Did you see that? Ooh. That's when you know it's real. Yeah. Get body. And um, <laughs> now you have a game in which the Jacksonville Jaguars are able to, to, to control the Buffalo Bills offense. And I know that there will be – it's reaction and then reaction and then reaction. But right now – I mean, the, the math adds up. You you take away the deep passes. You play cover two shell. You put uh, DBs, safeties in the corners, and you make teams pass 10 times to score instead of two times to score. And guess what happens? Turnovers. Yep. Mistakes. Penalties. 
any of those things can disrupt the drive. It makes sense to do it to these teams, and I don't know if it started in – like I didn't go back and watch the Super Bowl with Tampa Bay and see if that's what they did, but – but teams have found a way to slow down big arm quarterbacks this year. Part of the mayhem that took place. Um, I mean, the Packers, they looked awful, but they almost, they could have won the game. So I don't know. It has implications for fantasy because you have expectations of, of Diggs and Tyreek and Kelsey and Mahomes and Allen and, you know, big plays make fantasy football fun. Yeah. And the, so I it, vote we ban it. We ban the cover two shell. It's funny you bring up Madden because that's exactly what this reminds me of is when you're playing someone in Madden and they're just like kicking your butt over and over and over. And then it, like they're using the Ravens and they're just Lamar's running all over you and you finally find the play that has a spy and you're like, oh, well, I just, I just use this defense every single time and they can't roll the quarterback out. <laughs> so it's... This shouldn't be happening. Like I, I don't know enough X's and O's of uh, you know, defense versus offense to you know talk about the the cover two shell that's that's being reported this morning. But you, how as a as a head coach in the NFL, if they're just rolling this particular defense out, how can you not figure well, you, out how to beat it? You should be able to disintegrate it. But the two teams that can't disintegrate it are the two teams that can't run the football. Buffalo doesn't have a rushing offense, and Kansas City, it's fine. And those are that's what you need to do against this defense. You need to run the ball to break it down, and then neither team can do it. But it's just been it's been crazy to watch. Crazy weekend. I mean, the Cardinals had no 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 first team mm -hmm. and dismantled the 49ers. Um, you had, obviously, the Jacksonville game was insane. Denver goes into Dallas. I mean, if this game had been in Dallas was shut out. I know they got yeah, 16 yeah. points oh, at the gosh. end, but that was a shutout. Right. It was unbelievable. Holy garbage <laughs> There's never been any more garbage than what Dak Prescott did. I was the on, Rams disagree. I was on. Yeah, the, Ram, the Rams decided to take up most of our time <laughs> on one last drive that made no sense to do so. I had way too many plays. I had to freak out about Cooper Cup scoring against me. Player safety, Andy. Player safety. Yeah, they, <laughs> honestly, the, I kept thinking about it last night when these games were going on. I kept thinking, take a knee and get out of here. The game's over. Take a knee. It's not, you're not even doing anything for the books. This ain't an effect in the spreads. Like there is, I I do believe at a certain like if it if you have zero points, okay, and you want to play and you want to go kick a field goal just so that your record doesn't have the the shutout on it. I understand that. But if you have no chance to win the game, there is honor in being the team that's just like, <laughs> you did it. You you took it this time. If As long as it's not a playoff game or the Super Bowl. Right. You, just, you can fall on that sword. You did it. You beat us. We'll see you next time. Well, I mean, look at look at baseball. They used to, on the intentional walk. No. <laughs> on, the, on the intentional walk, you used to have to throw the ball four right. times. And they eventually just said, if you want to intentionally walk somebody, just go to first. Teams should be able to just say, all right, we're done. Yeah. Yes. We can see. <laughs> that forever. And the, but the only way you do that is it's not you don't tell the refs. You must walk off the field without telling anybody. <laughs> oh. You must walk straight <laughs> off and then you know. But yeah, it was crazy. Uh we always react on Monday with Monday mm. Monday. Oh, so yes. let's yes, we do. let's get sophisticated. Mm. How about Boston squat. Oh, squat. <laughs> or Boston snot. <laughs> oh, yes, and the ever appropriate Flames, Connor. What about Kadarius Phony? Embarious, Tony. That sounds like a Harry Potter spell. Embarious. <laughs> uh, Elijah Score. Carlos Tried. Oh, yeah. Yes, he yeah, did. I mean, not bad. No. DJ Snore. Jarvis Shamdry. Oh, but come on down, Donovan People's Choice Award. <laughs> <laughs> That's so dumb. And let's... Uh, not leave here without mm. bashing Brooks's Cowboys. Yes, mm, yes. Please. Slack Prescott. Amari Pooper. In silence of the Lamb. And Ezekiel. 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 Sure, Ezekiel. Ezekiel Smelliot. I like Ezekiel better. Mm. <laughs> He's taking a leak on the field with his Woof. play. Woof. I mean, week nine, go away. There were more. I mean, we could. It was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. I mean, I there are stories oh, we haven't even told. It's not done yet. Because oh um, yeah, the Bears are going to dominate tonight. Yeah. I mean, Allen Robinson. Hope he's in your lineup. He's going to have two hundred yards <laughs> he's on in, the Steelers. He's in one of my lineups. Well, I mean, the only thing that would we make haven't even sense... talked about Brandon Ayuk. 
Well, because we're <laughs> because Andy, we haven't hit the stud section oh, of the show. Oh, oh. Hey, make sure you check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. dot com. We're on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Uh, before we jump into the news, I do want to briefly, now that I'm back, thank everybody that was super supportive over the past week. Obviously, a stressful time for our family. Um, had a number of incredible human beings reach out and offer us support, and obviously, a lot of people are in far worse situations than we were. So. Uh, you know, prayers out to everybody right mm-hmm. now going through so much with, with the COVID stuff. So back, healthy, happy, uh, feel very blessed to say that. So news and notes from around the league presented by sleeper Calvin Ridley was added to the reserve non-football injury list ahead of week nine. He will miss a minimum of two more weeks. So okay reevaluate at that point uh Clyde Edwards Alaire getting closer to a potential return from IR we'll see what happens closer to a potential return yeah that it sounds like <laughs> steps away <laughs> That's ominous uh Tua the big news was Tua Tungavailoa we found out was not going to play I mean small fracture in the middle finger of his throwing hand Brissett got the start if you watch the game I mm. apologize to your eyes he got that dub and um, they placed Devontae Parker on IR. We had reported he wasn't going to play, had a setback. But uh, the kind – it was like a McCaffrey setback where you go right on IR and we're just going to wait. Yeah, it was It was so upsetting because of what we saw last week. Devontae Parker looked like – you know, he, he was playing great. And it was like, okay, we've got we've got an offense here. Two is throwing the ball well. Let's let's believe in the Dolphins, and then you, and then you get neither of them. That was That was upsetting. Injuries in week nine. The big one was Chase Edmonds leaving with a high ankle sprain after one play. Uh, could be heading to short-term IR. They're doing an MRI today to confirm a high ankle sprain. Depending on that result, you'll get the timeline for Chase Edmonds' return. I don't know if it's fair to bring up what has happened to Mike or not, <laughs> um, but here we are. Foot Clan, I can't believe I Mike. I can't believe you're here. I like on this planet. I am so proud of you for Thank you. uh for for being here. The only way you could I have couldn't lost, find a bridge high enough. You have you have <laughs> oh, lost no. you, you have lost heartbreaker after heartbreaker after heartbreaker after impossible heartbreaker. Yes. And last night I guaranteed you a win. You did, you've what you've done before. Which I have done before. <laughs> I guaranteed it because it was locked in, it was over basically the only possible way you could remotely lose is if James Conner, backup running back for the Cardinals, scores 40, scores 40, says Jonathan Taylor has nothing on me and scores 40. If he scored what Jonathan Taylor scored, you would have won. Yes. He scored 40 because Chase Edmund goes out on the first play. It's impossible. Yes. So for, for everyone, look, I, this was, this was a double dose because as an analyst, like, the process of they're going on the road against a division foe. They're not going to have their number one wide receiver. They're not going to have their starting quarterback. The process is you cannot play the backup running back. That was the advice that I gave. I uh, took that advice. I benched James Conner. And then the starter gets hurt on his uh, first carry. Uh, so for all the people like, you told me to bench James Conner. I lost because James Conner went off. So... You could you could take it and shove it. <laughs> Mike 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 is because uh, I feel worse than you do. I mean, Mike said that like normally you hope to wake up, you bounce back a little from the emotions. You know, you you can be upset and but you know it wears off. There's a certain like uh, what a half life <laughs> a half life yes. to the to, to the pain, but uh, lasting a little longer this morning. I have so many losses of two or fewer points. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You can't believe what is happening. Um, concussion for Zach Moss. Uh, Zeke left with a right knee contusion, was on, was off, was on, was off. Uh, He'll probably be fine. Trevor Lawrence, low ankle sprain, will be limited this week. James Robinson didn't play. James, uh, this was crazy. Patriots, Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson both left with head injuries late in the game. Yeah. So this will be something to monitor for the, what, Brandon Bolden watch, J.J. Taylor watch this week. Yeah, and it was bizarre because like Ramondre Stevenson – had a had an excellent game. Like yeah, he had he, over a hundred yards from scrimmage. He uh, he was the currently the running back sixteen. We'll see what happens tonight. But 
Like he went from this not being featured into we're going to give him a whole bunch of work, just kind of muddying things, and then unfortunately he went down with an injury. Uh, Albert Aguebanam, everybody's DFS darling, exited early with a knee injury. Yeah. And Deshaun Jackson's expected to sign with the Raiders. I mean, this makes sense. It's that's it's interesting. Yeah, I mean, it, he becomes an actual fantasy dart throw that, you, you know, the same way that you would pick up and play rugs. Uh, I think Deshaun Jackson could be, you know, 98% of what Ruggs was doing out there. So he, he was he was a startable asset, and I think uh, he, he'll be on the waivers tomorrow. I think, yeah, I think I lean the other way with him because I don't see it as plug and play. Like Zay Jones was involved, and I think I – don't, I don't know if they could trust Deshaun Jackson to run enough routes to where you'd feel – it, it it won't okay. be as many. It won't be as many, but he still has the speed. Yeah, he's yeah. One of those, we saw him he, on the Rams. He's one of those players that doesn't need to play 90% of snaps. He mm -hmm. needs 20% of really, really good snaps. But I will say this part of it, he let he wanted a trade from the Rams because he wasn't being used enough. And they cut him, and he's signing in a place solely because sure. he believes he's going to get the opportunity to play that Ruggs role. Makes sense. Monday Night Football tonight. Get ready for week nine's continuation, the <laughs> the next chapter. We'll see what happens. There's a good chance that David Montgomery does play. So we brought this up as a, a probability on Friday, and it's going to have an impact on your expectations for Khalil Herbert. It's also not a good matchup. I mean, it's 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 a difficult matchup for the running backs. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm the Pittsburgh defensive front, I'm stopping the running game for Chicago and making Justin Fields pass for more than 100 yards so probably tempered expectations you could i, I don't know are you, you don't have a choice at this point you've made your bet yeah so. that is correct and just did you guys realize because of all the chaos that happened of, of who won and who lost yesterday the entire afc west all four teams have five wins i did not realize that wow like the th Week this week, so they're all tight. They are five well, and I mean, four. Yeah, no, the the Chargers and Raiders are five and three. But, oh, okay. but all of them have five wins. And then you look at the AFC North, the Bengals, who just a couple weeks ago were the number one seed in the AFC, are now last in their division. Wow, I <laughs> football football's wilding out right now. Well, you want to add something else <laughs> to it? How about the only other undefeated road team in the entire National Football League? The New England Patriots, yeah, they're in, are they're five in and, it, man. Are five and four. The Bills are five and three in their division. They've won three straight games. So shout out there. Yeah, it's wacky. It's wacky. And then Arizona, Arizona's alone now because the Cowboys, the Packers, and the Rams all lost. The which was unexpected. The Patriots have. I just poked myself in the eye. <laughs> Did with a, with <laughs> a pin. Did you? Yeah, I, I saw it. Like, did you get the actual eyeball? A little bit. A little okay. bit. A little scrape. The Patriots have scored five – or forced, I should say, forced five fewer points than the Bills. If I hang on to – What is – I mean, that's it's an extra game, but still it's like, what is happening right now? What is happening? Yeah, yeah. I If I hang on to win in our league of record tonight, it will be on the back of the Patriots' defense in same Darnold. Uh, that was today's news and notes brought to you by our friends at Sleeper, the leader in breaking news alerts. You got to get the app. You got to get the breaking alerts channel. And before we jump into stud muffins, we've got to thank today's sponsors. We're talking about Wealthfront. You've heard us bring them up before. Um, golly, I've known about or used Wealthfront for probably at least 10 years. I mean, these guys have been, you hear stonks and you hear memes and you hear rocket ships and you hear about day trading. But that's, I mean, you're not going to outsmart the smart people that do this all the time. It's fun, but it can be dangerous. Mm -hmm. And what's neat is that decades of data show that investors that trade individual stocks underperform the market and Wealthfront can help you. Wealthfront can give you data-driven investing. You put it in their hands. They create a portfolio of globally diversified low index, low cost index funds personalized for you. Uh, in just minutes, no manual trades, no picking stocks, no watching the stock market freaking out. They handle it all based on your preferences. And uh, you got to check them out. They're trusted with over $20 billion in assets, and you can get your first 5,000 managed free by going to Wealthfront.com slash footballers. To get your first 5,000 managed for free for life, go to Wealthfront.com slash footballers. That's W-E-A-L-T-H 
wealthfront.com slash footballers to grow your savings. Go to wealthfront.com slash footballers and get started today. Footland, there's, there's nobody on the planet like you, so why would you buy a generic mattress built for everyone else? Want to thank our sponsor, Helix Sleep, saving your sleep. Look, they've got this quiz online. It takes just two minutes to complete, and it matches your body type and your sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. Everybody's unique. Like we said, Helix knows that. That's why they have several different mattress models to choose from. They have soft, medium, firm mattresses, great for cooling. To If you sleep hot, look, I'm a hot sleeper, and I appreciate that a mattress is out oh, there. Oh, so hot. That can, that can help cool me down. We've all taken the quiz. We've all uh, gotten a Helix mattress. Jason has like retrofitted mm -hmm. his entire house because it's true. because the mattress is so great. It's uh, you don't need to take our word for it. They have been awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ and Wired magazine. Just go to HelixSleep.com/footballers. Take their two minute sleep quiz and they'll match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year warranty and you get to try it out for a hundred nights risk-free they'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it but you're gonna love it so helix is offering up to 200 dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash footballers that's helixsleep.com slash footballers for up to 200 dollars off and two free pillows this week's fantasy stud muffins when you said Jason retrofitted his house, you know, with the Helix, I, I heard like remodeled. I'm like, he's tearing down walls because oh, of his yeah. mattress. I, all of my walls are now Helix mattresses. <laughs> it's a very safe place. It's very, safe. very safe. <laughs> I'm worried about that Play ceiling. Play a lot of sports indoors. <laughs> oh, my goodness. No, no. Ceiling is also. Oh, nice. Helix mattresses? Yeah, so you don't have to worry about that. It falls on you. It's going to be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Just going to be a. A night night sandwich, but it's made for you. Yes, <laughs> a night, exactly. A night night sandwich. That's right. That's right. Okay, <laughs> I want somebody to. Stay. Can we have we ever tried the, uh, the mattress on the bottom and the top sleep oh, sleep method? Dude, replace your covers with a mattress. <laughs> Heck yeah, I like a. Oh, you want a weighted blanket? Get that out of here. <laughs> Give me a mattress. <laughs> I'd like a suffocating blanket. <laughs> I guess that would be, you'd have to worry about that. I like to sleep like a panini, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think that's enough with the mattress jokes. Let's talk some stud muffins. Huh? Jason, Jason's just postponing the talk about Brandon IU. Yeah, let's uh, see how far we <laughs> Are can Are we push, on to the stinkers now? Push those wide receivers down. Hey, Justin Herbert, welcome back. 32 yes. for 38, 356 and 2, had a rushing touchdown. Um, they said it on the broadcast, you know, Mike Williams hasn't been himself and they said he's been dealing with this knee injury and you have to wonder with the production, whether that's come into play, Justin Herbert still got it done. And that's nice to see yes. for confidence after a couple of down weeks. He had a, he had a big week. Lamar Jackson, believe he's had three double digit comebacks this year. Um, 266 and three 21 on the ground. 21 carries. 21 carries for 120 Another yards. Another 100 yard rushing game. In NFL history, the leader in 100 yard rushing games has been Michael Vick with 10. And now Lamar Jackson has tied him with 10. Except it took Michael Vick 115 games. It has taken Lamar Jackson 45. 45 games to have 10 with 100 rushing yards. That's basically a quarter of your game, so a little under. That's insane. I blew people's minds this morning, reminding them or letting them know that uh, the Falcons are a playoff team right now. Matt Ryan went 23 for 30, 343 and 2. Uh, Cordero kept it going, and um, they're the seventh seed in the NFC. So I don't know if that means we have too many teams going to the playoffs or not, <laughs> but they are there 4-4. Four four. Uh, Carson Wentz had a great game on Thursday, and Teddy Bridgewater showed up. I mean, it uh, wasn't crazy impressive fantasy-wise, but had a, had a game. Kirk Cousins. And we broke the curse. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen. You did? I played Kirk Cousin in the Dynasty League, and he didn't fart in my face. Congrats. That's great news. <laughs> I mean, you've been doing the ping pong As he between has Daniel one, Jones, one to right? do, yes. James Conner's the story. <laughs> He stud, did fart in my face. <laughs> 21 for 96, two touchdowns on the ground, five for 77, and one through the air. He has 11 touchdowns so far. Currently, he is the RB what? On the season. No way. What do you think? 
I'm gonna if you tell me top five, I'm not gonna be shocked. He is the running back eight on okay. the season. And the reality is obviously a lot of that's gonna be skewed by this game, right? When you score forty yes. points in a game, your season totals will be much better than your consistency. However, he has been pr pretty consistent. Yes, he's been uh, scoring please. basically every week. Yeah. And it's moving forward. I mean, you may have multiple weeks without Chase Edmonds. That's what I mean. Like, if Chase Edmonds is – if he goes on the short-term IR, not the the best matchups, Carolina, yeah. Seattle, that's solid, and then Chicago after the bye week. But mm -hmm. still, it, it doesn't matter because this is a this is a very potent offense. And if Eno Benjamin will be worked in – look, Eno Benjamin looked all right yesterday. Did um, you see him run? His, the truck stick touchdown? He, he completely ran through yes. Dre Kirkpatrick. Like – he didn't exist. Yeah, like he was a phantom. Uh, you love to see it. Yes, but but James Conner will be. He should be slotted in as a as a high end running back one for at least a few weeks. The Cardinals have some things going for them that make his touchdown totals more predictable. Mm -hmm. You know, they they have a solid defense that has put the team in a great position. You know, it, it's just worked out. I mean, James Conner's been outstanding. James Conner since week three, because he got off to a slow start this season, those first two bad weeks, is the running back four. Yeah, it's insane. Jonathan Taylor, we knew the story from Thursday night, but unbelievable. Nick Chubb, oh, man. 137 so on just 14 carries, two touchdowns. Even, did you see the, the pass he caught? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was. It deep was down a the weird field. one. It was like a Baker kind of threw him into his own, and he, yeah, it was like a. It was a little awkward. There was I, a weird. It wasn't jump. a screen. It was a downfield target. <laughs> I, that was I, I. I mentioned to Mike while we were watching. I was like, that was a route. I was like, I don't. I feel like I've never seen him run a route and catch a ball downfield. But it was. It was great to see. Man, you just wish wish they would give him all the work. Yeah, Joe he Mixon. Would, he would be like Derrick Henry. He yes, would be. He would. The, he would be the best running back in football, but. Yeah, he he averages 5.3 yards per carry in his career, which is second only to Jamal Charles historically. That's so, absurd. Uh, he will have a couple of tough ones coming up. I mean, in New England, in Baltimore. Uh, Joe Mixon, 13 for 64 and two. Another great game for Mixon heading into the bye. Um, but the, the Bengals got to figure some things out. And Kamara, okay, we got back into the end zone. We caught four passes for 54 yards. Mark Ingram is being used i mean mm -hmm. i i thought he was flex worthy i mean i think he was right around double digits cordero cordero balled out he yeah got, i mean he's great he got a couple of long kind of bombs down the sideline in the receiving game only six targets in the receiving game which is like what you'd kind of expect like oh he'll get five or six targets turned it into six receptions for 126 yards that's, i mean that's how you do efficiency and he's been I think what I love about him is how consistent every week has been for him. I mean, he's been inside the top 22 every week since week two, including three weeks inside the top seven. So uh, 126 in the receiving game, and we know that they're not getting Ridley back. You know, this mm -hmm. is part of the offensive uh, plan, and it's working. Melvin Gordon, 21 for 80 and a touchdown. I Brooksy? We got to get we got to get Javante mentioned here though. Yes, he, um, was, he was seventeen for one eleven. They're on both. The ground. I mean, they're just both getting tons of work. It just the Javante comment is just because. Please see it now. Please see the future. Mm -hmm. The future is Javante in a full time role, and if Javante can have an okay game when Melvin Gordon gets twenty one carries, I mean, it's not a. Melvin Gordon's good. I yeah, mean, he's played. He's played really good football all year long. Three weeks in a row where he's been an RB two or better for fantasy. He's good for the team. He's been solid. He is, you know, the the quintessential starter. But RB fourteen on the year. Yeah, I mean he's great. But trade for Javante Williams if you still can, because he's. But I, do, I, do you mean that in this end I of year? I still do mean that in this end of year. See, You've I got a couple I don't of think weeks. Anything's changing. Well, even if nothing changes, even if nothing changes at all. From this point forward, week 10 through the rest of the season, they have the number one strength of schedule for the running game. So trade for Melvin Gordon if, if, if sure. you want. I just think that this running game is getting moving and the opportunity is is ahead of them. Philly, Chargers, Kansas City next three weeks. Detroit, um, Cincinnati, yeah, Chargers means, again yeah, in, in I think, championship nice. week. I think you can – I think maybe that advice of like go get Gordon. 
I mean, yeah, what are you going to have to pay for Gordon? He could be even cheaper. Oh, he has to be because everybody's going to be Just doing the, the song and dance yeah. that we're talking about. Devontae Freeman. <laughs> well said. <sighs> Dalvin Cook, 17 for 110, and a touchdown taken away, made me cry. Um, 90 rushing yards in the first quarter against a tough Baltimore defense. You know, the team came out before Sunday and said, "This we got to get Dalvin going. Um, we got to so, get the ball into his hands more often. So why did he only have 20 rushing yards for the next three quarters? Yeah. That's... I mean, they didn't. They never had the ball. They got him. Like the the ball. The the time of possession in the second half for Baltimore was absurd. Yeah, he had a sixty six yard run in the game too. So if you mm. if you break down, but oh, it, not only if you haven't seen this run, Dalvin Cook breaks one off. He's running down the right side of the field and cuts oh, it into yes, the middle. I know what you're talking. And then Justin the whirling Jeff dervish. Justin Jefferson comes screaming down the field for a block, but he's just – he's spinning his arms like he's – Windmilling. Like, just, like the way that Baker Mayfield does when he yes. runs down after he throws a touchdown. Like, and he, But he comes into the screen so fast. You're watching this angle, and he's just halfway down the field, and then from the left of your screen comes a Justin Jefferson going, Wah! Tornado of destruction. And then I think it's think like knocked over. It's, it is so funny. I will. Tr I'll try to find it so we can tweet yeah, it tweet out. I out. saw it going around after we had witnessed it in real time. We were dying. Uh, wide receivers that dominated this week. Bunch of guys you didn't play. Uh, Elijah Moore had the two touchdowns. You know he is. Which uh, I I blame no one for not. Look, well, yeah. I mean, how, how do you know that? I you mean, you couldn't play Elijah Moore. Um. Yeah, and he did it with Josh Johnson. I found it. <laughs> Did you? I have not seen this play, so you're gonna have to send it to me. It's so weird. Devonte Smith. Oh. Devonte Smith ended up with his best game of his young career, five for one sixteen and one. Um, you want Philly in games where they need to come back. You want Philly in games where they need to throw the football. And Smith had their best game of the of the year. It was and <laughs> I'm sorry, I posted it for everybody. Uh. But like the Devontae Smith game against the Chargers, this is <laughs> Jason has lost I'm so control. So tickled by that play, man! But You've got to go to our Twitter. What the heck We're is gonna, he doing? <laughs> it's so funny. Why is he doing that? It's he, like it's like the power up your punch yes, yes, with like the pop, left arm. He's doing a Popeye, and like uh, that is a man who loves football. That's a man who's out there having fun on the yeah. field. He's he's probably screaming as he's running down the field. He's <laughs> no! like, we don't we don't have the audio, but he is almost <laughs> definitely just going. <laughs> Uh, anyway, the the point of Devonte Smith doing again doing this against the Chargers was absurd. This was absurd. This was not the matchup that Devonte Smith was finally going to have a uh, an explosive game. But I, week I, nine, week nine. Yeah, I do think that uh, the the Chargers were down um, a couple corners in this game. So the the season long matchup uh, for you know targeting wide receivers has been really bad. But that was that was helpful. Um, and it's just good to see because, you know, obviously rookies are going to get better as the season goes on. Um, and and Jalen Hurts has the last couple weeks played solid football. Which has been not good for fantasy. <laughs> uh, you had Tim Patrick have a breakout performance with 4 for 85 and a touchdown. He made great play after great play in this game. Keenan Allen, 13 targets, 12 for 104. Nice to see. Uh, Hollywood Brown keeps doing what he's done. I mean, he's great. Yeah, you, you know, you guys are right. It, it's continuing. Twelve targets, nine for one sixteen. The the thing that is helping. I mean, there's a lot, right? Lack of a running game is helping. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what else is? Is this defense is giving up big plays? Yep. I mean, they the defense is not doing the thing where they get. I mean, they're he's having to come back constantly. Mm -hmm. And this is great. That's great for fantasy. Um, You've had you've had weeks where Hollywood Brown does nothing in the first half, mm -hmm. and then they have they to did the same this this week. Lamar Jackson in the first half was awful. He Objectively played terrible. he played really really bad football. Well, uh, granted, Mark Andrews did drop a touchdown early on in the game. That that was one of those like what what just happened. But other than that, Mark, Lamar was was off. And not seeing the field very well, but and then got it done in the second half. We had somebody in our league that was in such a pickle with multiple bye weeks, injuries. They had to make a desperation trade. They were three yeah, and five. Needed they needed, man, they needed to get a win, 
and they made the decision essentially to trade DeAndre Hopkins for Hollywood Brown. And you hear it, and this is this is a lesson for fantasy players, right? You hear something like that, you kind of, oh, what are you doing? Well, I didn't hate it. <laughs> you know what? You gained the week that Hopkins is hurt. You gained the bye week for Arizona. So you get two extra weeks of Hollywood. It's not just Hollywood versus Hopkins. And Hollywood's been, he's the wide receiver five on the year. So sometimes you just have to jump in. And this person was like, they did it. Then they were self-conscious about it. And then, you know, I got to give them credit because you got to make a move. And they win the, they won the week, mm -hmm. which means they're, they're in contention. Like all of you out there, if you want to win, you have to play week to week. It may hurt to do so. I had to trade Derrick Henry in a league to get Dalvin Cook and, I mean, I had to trade Henry and Justin Jefferson to get Dalvin Cook to stay alive, to win a game in a keeper league. Mm -hmm. But you just, sometimes you have to do it and ignore all of the rolling eyes. And, and the then, names. Yeah, and the names. Because Hopkins, obviously, higher draft capital, longer history, has been playing great. But Hopkins is averaging 13.5 fantasy points a game in half-point PPR scoring, which is fine. And Hollywood's averaging 16 fantasy points a game. So uh, on a per-game basis, he's he's uh, he's the better player so far this year. And Brandon Ayuk, my guy. <laughs> Eight targets, six for 89 and a touchdown. How am I supposed to feel? Because this was this – You was should feel good. Coming into this season, he was a my guy, right? Like mm -hmm. I, I put my, my name on Brandon Ayuk because I believed in him and then is the worst possible pick of all time. And now he's looking like – where – why – why was this guy Ch not involved? Changes. I mean, it from from what you can hear, what is being reported now, which you know, take it for what it is, but it sounds like practice, like which is talk about practice. Yeah, that's it, hilarious of that you hear that quote, but I mean, well, he had the injury, you know, in the in the off season, like right before the season started, but. After all the all the the air has been cleared between at least seems like it, the air is clear between Shanahan and Ayuk, it was Shanahan saying you're not practicing the way that I think that you should practice, and it's not just him and, either. And then there's reports that like teammates are seeing him kind of you know just dogging it during practice, not giving his all, and that that wasn't good enough for for the team and for Kyle Shanahan. And now that that has been aired out and the grievances have been taken care of, it seems like. Ayuk might be back on the up and up. And Ayuk, several of his catches were difficult, hard, you know, ac across the middle, two guys hitting him at the same time, coming down with the ball. He he looked really, really good outside of one fumble that obviously hurt their team earlier in the game. Um, granted, George Kittle did the exact same thing. Um, Brandon Ayuk looked good, but can you believe in him going forward? Uh, this Kittle is, not, is back. Debo is yeah, still this, the guy. This is not the um, Brandon Ayuk is going to be what he was party. This is the Brandon Ayuk is involved in the offense, and you can play him like the wide receiver two for the San Francisco 49ers party. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to worry about Trent Shurfield, and you don't have to worry about complete uh, lack of any targets on the course of the game. Um, you know, it was George Kittle that came out and talked about his practice habits changing. Oh, it, it was? It, it, was okay. it was other players on the team. I mean, it was Shanahan, too. I watched the whole interview where Shanahan said, you know, he basically made the game the week before with the blocks, the way he practices. But, you know, you just have to temper your expectations. And this is not an auto can't ever put him in your lineup situation. Um, this team could be changing quarterbacks, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, this could happen. This They keep losing football games. Uh, but it did work out this week, 6 for 89 and a touchdown. And uh, I think that does it for the wide receiver studs. Mm -hmm. George Kittle is back. Hey. 6 for 101 and 1. He's an auto start every single time. I know people were freaked out about it. Put him in your lineup. Kelsey got back into the end zone, 5 for 68 and a touchdown. He feels a little bit more like he has to right now right. than he used to with the yardage totals. Darren Waller, I mean, the big names actually got it done this week. Seven for 92 for Waller. And then, what, three Chargers? Uh, three Chargers in the top ten yeah. on the week. You obviously had Jared Kuick, uh Who was number three of that list. Yes, he was. Donald Parham Jr. and Steven Anderson. All right, we got to have, we gotta have the Parham Anderson. discussion, Jason. We, okay, let's have it because we – we know what it is. So we like you want to say a person's name correct. Absolutely, we take pride in getting that right and, and wrong and wrong. Yeah, oh, every sure. once in a while, it's, it's goofy. 
But on the broadcast, they were emphatically saying his name was Donald Parham. Mm -hmm. Parham. Now Parham. Now, I mean, that. It, 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 let's just. I'm reacting to this because I wasn't watching with you yeah. guys. That's probably advantageous for our show. Oh, it would be fantastic news for us if his name if is... If he went ham. Oh, if it's yeah. truly Donald Parham, but I just... We it can't gotta, be Parham, right? We need our crack now, now team I will to say, track I, this down. When I was watching him score that touchdown, I don't know if it was uh, it was red zone. They went Parham. Yeah, I mean, it, it oh. makes so sense to This is a really parham. ham versus Parham oh, situation. Okay. We, we gotta, will vet and come back to you, Foot Clan. Either way, we will Launch go, an investigation. Regardless of the result, we will probably go Parham. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness um, don't miss this last tight end study uh let's get to the poopers <laughs> evan ingram <laughs> evan ingram is a stud with his three for 38 but he got another touchdown that's right it was a 30 yard touchdown and it was a beautiful catch so he added eight more yards has anybody game. ever seen mccall hardman and evan ingram in the same room are they the same player <laughs> no players get more snaps and more opportunity to deliver oh, man, no that, value. That Hardman drop. I don't know if you saw oh, that. I didn't see the drop. Oh, it was like for a it was I think it was third, going for first down. He's No, like, I think it was fourth. What? And he's not even turning it's not the look away. It's he's looking at the ball. It hits him right in the hands. Then he looks away and forgot the part where you close the hands. He also on the had ball. he also had a ridiculous penalty on a on a motion where they got a false start yeah. on the goal line. Woof. He has brain farts every game. I mean, he's done this for years. I can't I it's honestly it's, I was talking to Smith and it was he's like it's the eighth wonder of the world. How McCole Hardman, who plays with Patrick Mahomes for this many years, can never give you a special game. It's almost like he was overdrafted because they mm. thought that they needed a replacement fast wide receiver. Mm. It, it yes. Yes. I mean it it very much because when, when it happened all of us went, huh? There, there's no reason why. I mean, if, if John Ross was on that team, if Henry Ruggs before all this stuff was on that team, it's a very similar thing where it's like kind of one trick pony that makes mistakes. It, it sucks. So at least you can. Uh, I'm just surprised the team hasn't formally moved elsewhere. Right. Like, like involved Pringle more often or Demarcus Robinson. Because he's just so fast. Yeah. Hartman's well, so wait, fast. wait, twenty four hours, and Odell Beckham can show you what. Oh uh, what no! He can do. You got any? Uh, how does he not go to Seattle? Oh man, I how don't does he think, not go to Seattle? Why would he need to go to Seattle? Because got DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Well, they, they do. They do stuff like this. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. Uh, he's expected to be released today, so they're just the highest be, on the list that look like a team that thinks they're not going to believe that they're out of contention. He should be. Uh, Claimed or cleared by, uh, f what is it, f 1 p.m. Eastern or uh, 1 p.m. Pacific yeah, tomorrow? It seems like he will not be claimed because he's already telling teams, <laughs> he's, already, he's already posturing that if you're a bad team and you claim him, but he's not going to go play for yeah, you. Yeah, he says there's going to be issues. <laughs> right, which they already knew that, Odell. <laughs> I mean, That's uh, not breaking news. Right. No. Issues are being factored into this signing. All right. Pooped in his big boy pants. Fill up them trousers. Josh Allen is the biggest pooper of the week. Yeah. No touchdown passes, two interceptions. Um, you know what's getting gaining some popularity? Have you noticed this? There's something getting real popular in the NFL right now. Oh, do tell. And this is the um, I Look Ridiculous interception. Oh, Maybe yeah. Maybe you've seen that. Spin First Carson Wentz kind of did it, yeah, and then it was like, oh, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. And then Josh Allen's like, I'm falling down, but nope, I'm going to throw the ball to my namesake. Mm -hmm. And then you saw Matthew Stafford's like, I mm -hmm. want in on this last night with yeah. the tornado t interception. Yeah, yeah, tornado interceptions are all the rage. I mean, it's like if you get it's if you get sacked, just throw it, just chuck it, man. Close those eyes and <laughs> give it a whirl. I mean, this was this is insane because this is the kind of game where you're like, okay, even after the first half, you're, you're shaking your head, you're going. This is the kind of team that just in the second half they mopped the floor with them. Exactly. Two weeks in a row. I, I paid up for Josh Allen in our in our DraftKings uh challenge. And last week he sucked the first half and then was the number one quarterback on the week. So I, I did it again and he did not he did not um no. show up a, at the end of this game. Um he was terrible and um so was Patrick Mahomes. So you're two We need to have a discussion about Patrick Mahomes because I get it. 
Mahomes is incredible. He's electric. The that contract won a Super Bowl already. That contract's electric. It, oh, it, it's, I wish I had that contract. The last five weeks, he has been a top twelve quarterback one time, including the last three weeks where he was quarterback twenty two, se- seventeen, and quarterback twenty currently on the on the week. That could go down after Monday night's games. What like, what do you do here with because Mah- the the first month of the season was three touchdowns, three touchdowns, three touchdowns, five touchdowns. It was everything that you wanted Mahomes to be when you drafted him in the second or the third round. What, like, leg- legitimately, what are we doing here for fantasy football with Patrick Mahomes? I I think that you can do one of two things. Um, I'm. I'm not going to necessarily trade for him because okay. the capital that you um, usually need for a big name like that I is, think you might be able to get a decent discount right now. And and I feel like you can still get a haul because he, he's Patrick freaking Mahomes. Mm-hmm. You offer him in a trade if you have him, and you, it's still going to carry weight. Um, Odell Beckham has sucked for years <laughs> And you could still trade him for value because when you've got the tippy top name value, the the commercials on every station uh, with your face in it, your 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 value is just secure. Well, and the championships with his name inscribed on them. I mean, it's it's there's still a really good chance that Patrick Mahomes is dominant the rest of the year. Absolutely. So are you trading for or or trading away? I'd be I'd be trading away. Yeah, me too. Okay. Because I think the value I can get trading away is better than what I have to pay to go get him. And if you go get him, guess who you're starting every week, no matter what? There, this yes. happens, yes. right? Like a, the superstars that you draft at, with high capital can't leave your lineup. It's just like a, it's like an unwritten rule. It's a lock because you just can't be the guy that spent that draft pick mm-hmm. that put him on your bench. And that's a problem. That's a, that's why f- streaming quarterbacks is a mental benefit to you as a a fantasy player joe burrow oh oh, wow was he bad he did he he had a nice nice kind of uh awkward looking interception i played him everywhere i saw that i have i mean he destroyed my soul this weekend um and and it was him it was he he was you know sometimes it's like oh the interception not your fault this was all him. He just flat out red zone stunk interception pick it six up. I mean, it was it was putrid. I I was all in on on Burrow this week, and it did not work out. No touchdowns, two interceptions. You weren't factoring in Cleveland not having OBJ on the team, right? I didn't know the morale boost was coming uh, so quickly. So um, yeah, that that was a bad one. Joe Burrow now goes to a bye week, comes back. I mean, I'm I'm not going to overreact to how bad it was. Um, obviously, that's going to be a down game. Uh, down game for all his receiving options. I assume that this was Jamar Chase's first bad week. Um, certainly, no touchdown. Yeah, and Matthew Stafford had a, an off game yesterday, mm-hmm. and he he's pretty much single handedly lost the game for his team. Um, between the the goal line interception and following that up with a pick six, I mean, it was it was over. It gave him fourteen <laughs> points. And the game was over. It was a, it was a strange game for the Rams. Of I mean, multiple sacks where it looked like. I don't know if it, I didn't. I haven't seen the eye in the sky camera, but it looked like they were coverage sacks too. So it was the Rams did not have it together last night. How can I, I was thinking about this on the drive-in? How can teams get so much better? Like they lost Derrick Henry, right? Mm-hmm. And their defense was trash, and now they're like, "Well, we lost Derrick Henry. We're going to have to be good at defense." Well, they had to change the <laughs> so philosophy like, of the team. It's like so now they were just they <laughs> shut down the Rams. Their defense stepped up. It's like, hey guys. You know, you could have maybe played like this when Derrick Henry was here. You didn't have to wait for the injury, but there's something about like the human condition of yeah. like, well, now we now we have to, and when you have to, and your back's against the wall, you you play better. The Cardinals did. Yeah, it's just crazy that 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 stuff actually happens in real life. Well, it just shows that this weekend of all weekends, you know, the whole every given Sunday thing or any any given Sunday, it's like the difference between elite. And the worst is like a it's razor thin. Mm-hmm. It's like these guys showed up in Jacksonville to play harder this week, and that was enough to beat one of the best teams in football. Um, it's crazy. It's definitely crazy. And they, Tennessee has the easiest schedule the rest of the season. 
how crazy they they've dominated too because they they just had a murderer's row of uh, oh you know, yeah they just beat like three of the best teams in the NFL and I just want to remind people of the shellacking that the Cardinals <laughs> gave them week one um, and that's and it. the Jets the Jets beat them too <laughs> that's right because that's, that's the NFL weird world uh, running back stinkers I want to know if you're concerned ready Aaron Jones yes I mean. With the way that they have, isn't this just a Jordan Love effect? Uh, maybe partially, but um, so it could be just Jordan Love. But it's AJ Dillon is my worry. My yeah. worry is simply that AJ Dillon. I mean, it felt like he got more run. Now, obviously, Aaron Jones played sixty three percent of the snaps, um, so he didn't necessarily. You know, Aaron Jones was on the field, but it was really too close of a timeshare for me to be excited now obviously if the offense is better and Aaron Rodgers is there then great they're going to score more than checks notes zero points no this no is, they, got, oh, they, got, they, they, they got, scored they, that's right Alan Lazard this is Kamara and Ingram it's the same situation Kamara since Ingram's been there is in the 60 percent snap totals um you need the offense to move and you need him to get in the end zone I'm, I don't have any differing – I mean, no different concerns this week than I did last week on Aaron Jones. Yeah, maybe. I mean, what what about the fact that you might possibly be without Aaron Rodgers for another game? I mean, I'd be, yeah, that would be a problem. I mean, it's going to be a problem for both of them, for sure. The offense couldn't move. Your your ceiling is messed up. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, which I think if people want to worry about Alvin Kamara's ceiling, if, if they don't have Winston and – you have a right to do so there as well. Two targets, no catches. Jordan Love means hey, don't don't be all in on Aaron Jones next week. Yeah, I suppose. Do you think Rodgers plays? I, I, I it's no too early. it's too early to yeah. know. I I don't know, but I I do think it's worth saying that the Packers straight up, without a doubt, made a mistake by trading <laughs> up their first round to get what. What they got last night was what they were hoping the future – and obviously he's young, that's his first start. But it's like, dude, you had Aaron Rodgers. This guy is not so special that you needed to trade up and get him years in advance. Just – it's it's a mistake. It's just flat out – you were well, wrong. it was a mistake regardless of how Love played, right? Yes. Potentially, but I if mean, last Love night, sucks – Last night can't be an indictment on the man's career. No, I but mean, otherwise Justin a, Fields' career is over because uh, that's how he played. He played like Justin Fields. Sure, and Justin Fields' career might be over. <laughs> oh, Fields man. is getting better. Um, Daryl Henderson. Yeah, on and that off was, the field due to injury. Yeah, super disappointing night. Boston Scott, Jordan Howard ended up with 17 uh, carries. Boston uh, Scott just 10. I mean, I don't know if he had big boy pants to poop, but he had pants. No, but this it like it needs to be highlighted. Of this is a. You know, a, a big whiff here of one of those you, in hindsight, you can see it coming because last uh, last week when the, the, they were dominant, the Eagles, you know, crushed Detroit. It was Boston Scott in the first quarter, and then and then Jordan Howard started to get worked in, and even though Boston Scott was ended the game as the you know he was the the, the main guy in the box score, Jordan Howard they really started to turn to him and they the turn kept going and Jordan Howard was the primary ball carrier and then of course of course Kenneth Gainwell had to score a rushing touchdown just to make everyone feel terrible about all Eagles running backs which yeah. you should feel terrible about them all yes yeah. you should feel terrible about them all going forward Jordan Howard's going to be more involved Nick Sirianni said he, ha quote, has to make Jordan Howard a permanent part of the offense, even after Miles Sanders gets back, which means I'm washing my hands of the whole thing. And no one's had a worse season than Mike Davis, right? I mean, 9 for 13. Considering his opportunity? Yeah, I mean, Mike yeah. Davis has been a, an unmitigated disaster. Every play that they give him the football is a play that they'll never get back. <laughs> oh, that's well said. Jeremy McNichols, yeah. 7 for 24 on the ground, 3 for 11 through the air. Un, uh, you know, Adrian Peterson was a dud, but he got in the end zone. So, yeah, McNichols had more rushing yards than Peterson. <laughs> yeah, there the there was a lot of question. Obviously, this was the number one waiver claim between Adrian Peterson and Jeremy McNichols, and the answer was just as much Deonta Foreman as either of these guys when it comes to just who's getting the opportunity. 
Uh, it looks to be potentially a three-headed yeah. monster, which is not something I want to participate in. Yeah, we were really hoping it would be two, but Deontay Foreman became the late surprise there when they, they added him. I think that was after the waiver period had happened. You might legit just see perfectly even snaps between the three. Yeah, you might. Uh, all right, wide receiver duds. Tell me if you're worried. Tyreek, 11 no. targets, four for 37. He goes as Mahomes goes. Devontae Adams, 14 targets, no. just six for 42. No, Jordan no. Love's not good right targets now. Targets aren't everything, huh? <laughs> it's the quarterback. <laughs> Rodgers' targets are so much nicer. Yes, they are. Jamar Chase. I guess you could be encouraged at 14 targets. You did get that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jamar Chase, 13 targets, just six catches. Burrow did. What's crazy, and Burrow like had a good completion percentage, so apparently all of his missed targets went to Jamar Chase. Uh, but this is... Chalk it up to a bad week by the Bengals. They got the bye week. Hopefully they figure it out. Uh, all right, let's go to the Cowboys, Cooper and Lamb. Dak had an off night. I'm not an gonna, off day. I'm not going to be worried too much about this. It was just a terrible performance by the Cowboys all around. Sutton. Yeah. One for nine. Yeah, you got to be concerned. Well, you should I be concerned because you already were. Judy's return was yes. going to be a... Uh, a problem. Yeah, and then you hoped that it would be Judy and Sutton. And that there you know there's a you can support two wide receivers in this offense. Um but then the fireball happened. <laughs> uh Fireball Jones had a monster game, Judy had a great game and it really um it, it it certainly is concerning for Sutton and really I think it's potentially concerning for um Judy. It's it's too early to just say well then Judy's going to get everything. It just this could have been a Judy week. Next week could be a Sutton week. It, it, if Fireball is in, involved, um, Tim Patrick, then I don't think there's enough in this offense to support three wide receivers, and you're going to end up with some dud bad games. This is one of those things where Narrative Street will get you in trouble because Jerry Judy has never been a valuable fantasy commodity on a regular basis. It's only he has, his second year. Yeah, but I, I, my that's my point. The, the point is, in, if you've never seen it, and it hasn't happened yet, then always waiting for it is not always the best plan of action for who you start in fantasy. The team doesn't care about our fantasy teams. They care about Tim Patrick, the guy who never drops a pass and getting first downs. My point is, is there's no incentive for the team and no demand by Judy target-wise to make us think he's going to be better than the other two. There's no Easily he could be the third worst. Yeah. Possible. Why, why would he be better than the other two is my point. It, uh, yeah, I think I still think Judy's the number one guy. He's he had eight targets. It was a funky game because they were destroying Dallas so much. So he only was on the field for sixty percent of the snaps. But currently, Judy is sitting as a as a top twenty four wide receiver on the week. Gotcha. Um. All right, Mike Williams, two for fifty eight. Man, get healthy, man. He, he is guess. he has been outside the top fifty five in four of his last five weeks. <laughs> I don't like pushing the button. I'm going to be honest. That's I don't like hitting 55. them on a sad one. No. No, that's like fair. But you, you gave me the look, and I felt like compelled. Look, yeah. You got to do what you got to do. It's a bad stat. Um, he's got bad stat, but a good quarterback. Here's um, bad stat, oh. bad quarterbacks. DJ Moore, uh, seven targets, three for 32. It is he not went out for pie with Allen Robinson after the game. It is... <laughs> We, hey, hey, don't you put Allen Robinson on DJ Moore. I'm going to say Dude, something. He's, that, the, he's the new Allen Robinson, DJ, 100%. But I'm saying I think DJ Moore is a tremendous wide receiver. I think Allen Robinson's a tremendous wide yeah, receiver. I would agree no. with both of he's you. He's an all-pro, multi-year. Uh, um, Was. I'm going to say something that's going to upset the Foot Clan. It's going to upset you guys. But okay. partial, not a full, partial apology to Adam Gase. Because, okay. Because okay. you got the brunt of all of it. Right. But now we know who your quarterback <laughs> was, and it was this same Darnold. He is horrendous. Some of his interceptions make you just laugh. It's so much fun to watch if you don't if you're not a Panthers fan and you're just like, dude, check this out. He's throwing to a guy three feet in front of him, airmails him ten yards. Yeah. Goes right into the defender. Oh, it's, that interception was it was so bad. It was that so interception much fun you to need watch. to specify which one. Right. Exactly. <laughs> There's um, three of them. 
uh, I can't believe they left him in. I really – once he threw the pick six, I thought we'd see P.J. Walker. I think Walker starts next week. Oh, you – I mean, this is bad. Yeah. But the, the fact – they passed on Justin Fields. They passed on Mac Jones. They decided to avoid the blessing of a rookie quarterback contract and go with the, you know, we're going to trade draft assets and pay Sam Darnold. This was a – It was a weird choice. Look, you have to lay some things at the feet of Matt Rule here. All the control he has, the fact he spo- he, you know, he had the confidence to say, hey, I'm going to be able to fix Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. No, you didn't. Yep. You I, didn't fix him. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Well, he temporarily, <sighs> temporarily uh, repaired him for the first couple weeks. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, that, then... and that was just Christian McCaffrey. You put McCaffrey on New York for Adam Gaze, I bet you he looked all right there. Yeah, it's, it's tough. I don't know if Favre is feeling strong enough or <laughs> Kurt Warner. Um, oh, they're going to go back. veteran? But I, I mean, you Phillip just. Phillip Rivers. Yeah, I was going to say, Pete River is the one to call, if yeah. anybody. Yeah. This, this team is too good everywhere but quarterback to be this bad. He, he's so bad. It's not like they're an average team. They stink. They can't score. Did any- Robbie Anderson score any points this week? He did he, catch a Yes, I think pass. he had one. I, I'm going to guess his stat line. I believe it is one catch for two yards. I almost feel like we need one of those, like, uh, that's like a segment. Did Robbie, did Robbie Anderson catch Robbie a pass? Robbie was one for two. Oh, Wait, nailed. one catch for two yards? That is correct. So After a goose so last week? We got three targets. <laughs> so, oh. So in the past month, Robbie Anderson is averaging – on a per game basis 1.8 receptions and under seven yards <laughs> under seven yards a game for a month yeah let me read you that hey, look robbie i know i and know he got that's extended, not all your right yeah here's, he did yes he he got paid good uh, thing you signed that before this year yeah here's his here's his receiving yards by game over the last month 11 14 0 2 game changer i mean he, 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 barring a change mid-season to some solution at quarterback how do they not? How do they not do everything to get Deshaun Watson with the pieces that they have around them? I, I mean, don't there's know, been man. a lot of talk about that already. Like in the offseason hits, we've sh- we've seen them. They go out and got Stephon Gilmore, right? Mm-hmm. They've gone out and been aggressive, even though the Donald move was awful. Like, are they going to be aggr- more aggressive they, than Miami? They will be as aggressive as possible. Unfortunately, they lost capital in going to get Sam Darnold and they didn't <laughs> use their number eight pick on a quarterback that they could have done even if they were trading you know try to try to trade for whoever was available with the eighth pick yeah it's just it's it's really bad and I think Matt Rule might just want to play quarterback I had somebody pivot from Colt McCoy into Sam Darnold against me <laughs> it was great <laughs> Uh, DJ oh, Moore, man. yeah, bad game. Yeah. And you have, you have no confidence that he can carry your wide receiver core moving mm. forward. No, not with Darnold. Yeah, we talked about it in the never not working. He was one of those highlighted players where it's like, it's not going to get much better for him if Darnold doesn't get better, and Dar- Darnold's not getting better. A.J. Brown and Julio both had disappointing performances. The targets were there for Brown, just not the production. I, I don't, how did the Titans win this game? They, win the, they won Pick the game on, on two plays. It was interception, touchdown, interception, touchdown. And mm-hmm. it just happened in two seconds. And then they do what they do better than every team in the entire league. They waste the clock. They can get the clock to disappear so fast. But how did they do it? Because they had no running game. They just, oh, they did it, man. They just barely do Swame. enough to get that first down. I mean, uh, they Vra- do. Vrabel, uh, he's, he's a great coach. He is. He is a great coach. Kadarius, Tony, Kenny Galladay. Yeah, Tony was super disappointing. <laughs> oh, Kenny. <please. laughs> oh. Well, good news. They're on by. You guys remember that uh, Kadarius Tony game where he had 189 yards? Oh, yeah. That was yeah, fun. Doing. He's still really good. But not if you don't throw him the ball. Yeah. Mark Andrews, 5 for 44 on 10 targets, dropped a touchdown. Yeah. Should have had a good game. I mean, it, you know, some dro- not all drops are made the same. This was laid up right into his belly, perfectly mm-hmm. in stride, and it just went through his arms. It was sh- shame on you, Mark Andrews. Identical situation with Pitts. Three for 62, which was fine. Dropped, dropped a play down the sideline that so uh, yeah, early. A, it would have been at least a 40-yard game, if, if not if a touchdown. If he didn't house it, yeah. And this so. was the second game in a row that you saw top cornerbacks on Pitts as the, as the main guy. I mean, they were – 
they're they are yeah, going to bracket putting him. all the coverage on him, which is why uh, the wee little man had such a good game. <laughs> Zacchaeus, yes. Dallas Goddard, three for forty three, huge yeah, whiff. I thought he was a great start this week. The Chargers have been giving up so many points to opposing um, tight ends, and maybe maybe Dallas Goddard just maybe he doesn't have the same the ceiling we thought he would have. I think it's just a bad week, honestly. I'm still very confident in him moving Don't, forward. Didn't you think you might get some like number one performances from him without Ertz? Oh, yeah. number like number one overall. Yeah, I mean, I'm talking the not con- with not the, with Jalen Hurts as his quarterback. I'm talking like two touchdowns in 90 oh, yards. No, has Jalen Hurts thrown two touchdowns <laughs> okay. at all this all year? Right. Zach Ertz was just three for 27 for Arizona. A little more understandable because yeah. of Colt McCoy being in there and James Conner dominating. I don't think. Zach Ertz did anything wrong. It just was a bad outcome, and I would still be happy to have him on my roster. Dalton Schultz, Mike Gesicki, not very good. Yeah. All right, we want to thank pristineauction.com for supporting the podcast. You can get a Jonathan Taylor signed jersey. $57 ends on Tuesday night. There are hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions up there at pristineauction.com. Please use the code BALLERS. You'll get a $10 credit towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. Waivers on tomorrow's show, oh, gentlemen. Yes. Jason will get a millimeter of beard back. Oh, baby. And Come on. I'll push hard for two. <laughs> we'll talk to you then. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.